and welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and really try to explain it in a simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most I'm going to try and tie in to the current school curriculum. So when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. Today's Key Stage 3 episode is all about the basics of water waves and an introduction to superposition. Now, I have done a Key Stage 4 episode all about waves, but I think it's just a bit too detailed for what we need to know. But if this does spark your interest, then there's always more content in that episode for you to go check out. So, water waves are transverse waves. Now this means that the wave's up and down motions are at right angles to the direction that the wave is travelling in. Waves travelling across the ocean are a great example of this. You have the waves which will be going up and down like this. And yet, it will be travelling this way. So towards the shore or something. So you can see really easily from this example how the wave's undulations, which is a really fancy word for up and down movements, are at right angles to the direction that the wave is going. Now all waves transfer energy from one place to another. They don't transfer matter. For example, a big wave will crash onto the beach and in turn move the rocks on the beach around. The direction that the wave is travelling is also the direction in which the energy is being transferred. Therefore, if we do our maths right, we can see that the undulations are also perpendicular to the direction of the energy transfer. Remember, if the wave direction and energy transfer is this way or this way, then the wave undulations will be this way and this way. Light waves are also transverse waves, and therefore, just like light waves, water waves can be reflected too. If water hits a surface like a seawall, then the wave will be reflected and redirected, just like light. And if you want to know more about reflection, Check out my episode on it. Right, so transverse waves look like this. Yes, and we can also draw them on a graph like that, with direction of travel or position on the x-axis and wave undulation and displacement on the y-axis. So they can be drawn like this, and the crest is the highest part of the wave, so the point at which the wave is highest above the x-axis and the trough is the lowest part of the wave, the point at which the wave is lowest below the x-axis. Therefore, as we can see, displacement is how far a point on the wave is from the x-axis, or the middle line. And the amplitude is the maximum displacement, so the distance from the middle of the wave to a crest or trough. Okay, that's the transverse and water wave basics. Now on to superposition. Superposition happens when two waves meet. If two water waves meet, then their displacements will be combined briefly. So they join and become one single wave, with the total displacement being each wave's displacement added together. After the combining, the waves carry on as they were before, as if nothing ever happened. Let's start off with three examples of what would happen if two waves of the same size meet. If two identical crests meet, then the crest height would double. So before, they would look like this, approaching each other, and then bam, they would combine to make a double crest, and then carry on out the other side again. If two identical troughs meet, then the trough depth would double. So before, they would look like this, approaching each other, and then BAM, they would combine to make a double trough, and then carry on out the other side again. Can anyone guess what would happen if an equal sized crest and trough would meet? They would cancel each other out! So if one wave was at a crest, and the other wave was at a trough, you would subtract the trough depth from the crest height to get your combined wave. 
Therefore, if the crest and the trough were the same size, then they would cancel out and produce a flat line, and therefore a flat water surface. Damn! Now let me do just two quick examples where the crests and the troughs aren't equal in size, just to make sure that we've all got it. So if you had two crests moving towards each other, where wave one had an amplitude of two meters and wave two had an amplitude of three meters, then the combined wave would have an amplitude of five meters. And the same goes for if you had two troughs moving towards each other with an amplitude of minus two meters and minus three meters. The amplitude of the combined wave would be minus five meters. Right, example two. If you had a crest and a trough moving towards each other where wave 1 had an amplitude of 4 meters and wave 2 had an amplitude of minus 1 meters, then the combined wave would have an amplitude of 3 meters. See what I did there? That's 4 minus 1 equals 3. Cool. Well, there it is. Water waves and superposition learned. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I'll try to do a video for you.